Chris Bledsoe has just released an absolutely mind-boggling interview in which he exposed some absolutely crazy things and to listen to the podcast without any kind of context, you'd think he's absolutely nuts. But Chris Bledsoe is very well known within the UFO kind of community. Um, he has released this book right here, which is called UFO of God, the Extra uh, Extraordinary story, True Story of Chris Bledsoe, which goes on to talk about his experiences with being abducted by aliens, supposedly. Now, um, I'm going to read a little bit about Chris Bledsoe um, from the Amazon um, kind of biography i suppose so it says chris bledsoe a deeply religious family man and successful business owner from north carolina was on the verge of an, the unthinkable after losing everything in the 2007 financial crisis and suffering from a debilitating chronic disease fishing along the banks of the cape fear uh, river with three co-workers and his teenage son he walks away from the group and cries out to god in a desperate prayer for help Suddenly, a UFO appears and saves his life and cures him of his illness, experiencing four hours of missing time. He returns to the group and then finds them troubled, terrified. They run for their lives as several UFOs chase them home. This is the true story of hope, love, lies and deception involving NASA, the CIA, a string of professionals... Uh, professor, sorry, and the church. Prepare to go on a spiritual journey of awakening and transformation with a visit from the lady, the Vatican, remote viewing, assassination plots of the Pope, dripping orbs, the burning tree, the Monroe Institute, the healing, um, the and, and healing the son of elite Washington DC power broker with ties to the White House. 16 years on, the phenomenal, um, the phenomena still uh, visits the Bledsoe family. Uh, and affects their lives and people who come into contact with them. To outsiders, it can be seen as demonic, but to those who are willing to keep an open mind, it's a blessing. So that is kind of the story of, well, this, this book that he's um, released. And in fact, he has done a few interviews regarding this. Now, this one is a bit of an older kind of interview from... So this is the recount of his... Um, uh, experiences from 16 years ago in which he lost about four hours of time he had a chronic disease which was terminal and then he he, he gets cured of it after being abducted by aliens it's absolutely friggin mind-boggling and we're just going to take a little listen to this if my computer wants to play ball come on there we go first being explained to you he wasn't there to harm you he was only there to help you right was there any other communication, any other times that you saw them or yeah. experienced them? Yeah, two nights later. This is Chris, by the way. Everyone say hello to Chris. This was on, uh, it was a Monday night when we had the experience on the river, Chris Jr. and the group. <coughs> a Wednesday night, my wife. Chris Jr. is his son. He's referred to as Chris Sr. for context. But coming home to Friday, right? So we're staying the rest of the week there, uh, just Jr. and I, and Wednesday night. Um, I'm struggling with Chris Jr. because he's in shock and he's had a really scary experience, right? Um, but, um, he was in a bad way. And these same dogs start barking again. Same way, scary bark. So I ran to the back door and could look out over the whole property out through the back, full glass back door. And there was a Christmas tree farm beside us, a big one. They had uh, new trees where people would, they would send them out, you know, cut all these trees. I just seeing my son get upset again all over because now we got two nights later these lights in the backyard again. And it's taken me two days to kind of calm him down and now he's freaked out bad. Oh my God, he's just really freaked. And um, so I just had this bit of rage come in me and I walked over to the gun cabinet and I grabbed a little holster, 44 Magnum rifle, little short saddle gun I used to bear hunt with. I'm on record, Boone and Crockett record book for shooting 660 pound black bear. Wow. North Carolina. It's a big, it was a record at that time. Wow. Uh, still impressive. in probably the top five. But um, I took that gun and I said, you come with me, Jenner. He said, no, I'm not. I'm not going out that door. He said, please don't leave me, Dad. I said, son, I'm going to end this tonight. That's what I told him. I was just being a father, I guess. So I walked back to that back 
far back right corner, and I went through that little opening you see. So I crawled, dragging that gun under these trees until I got about 20 feet from that orb, 20, maybe 30 feet. And the electricity from it, the buzz, the static, my whole body felt like needles. The hair was standing up and every bump, goose bump on me was just tingling. And the energy was so strong, I couldn't go any closer. I just turned around and I backed away. Wow. Walked back out of the forest, crawled out. And I got to the the pine trees where the fence was crunched. I stood up and I went to step over that fence. And the minute I went to step over that fence, there were two of these beings just appeared right in front of me, one on, I mean, they were standing like three feet from me and just enough gap I could walk between them. And immediately I felt this shame come over me, shame that I had this rifle, why I brought this to fight something that there ain't no fighting, right? So I took the gun and I tried to hide it behind me. And what they put in my head was what changed me. From that point on, I never hunted again. I don't harm bugs. I have uh, a way with animals now nobody understands. I have. Wow, it's almost like they telepathically communicated with him. But this is very similar to that of the Miami Mall experiences where people spoke about those beings and how those um, entities just appeared from thin air. Literally just one minute they're not there, the next they are. Um, that's very interesting. I have 50, 100 ducks, wild ducks will fly in and fly right up to me. If you come out there, they're gone. But they'll fly right up me from me, feed them wild mallards. And if anybody knows about mallard ducks, they're one of the most skittish mm. creatures in the world. They fly at you know, thousands of feet high at 80 miles an hour, and you need duck calls and blinds and decoys in the water to get one to land. Well, I have whole flocks of them fly right in and eat. I can feed them. But wow. that wasn't like that before. But these beings told me that they changed me. They told me that um, the way they put it in my head, when I say told me, they don't really talk. They put images that you know. Wow. It's just telepathic, I guess you could say. Yeah, it's like almost just through telepathy. But it made me understand that the whole world is, um, is a living, is alive, everything from the grass to every single animal, bird, tree, all had a consciousness. The cells in the body, like in, within the human body, there, there, you don't tell your body what to do. Something outside of us is telling our body how to function, the molecules, the, the, um, each cell that divides from one cell to the other has a conscience. Hey, yo, so who's controlling the body then? Who's, like, making me talk right now, even though I'm trying to tell myself from my brain to talk and say these specific words? Like, that's, that's, that's creepy. That's getting into, like, simulation territory. So, um, I'm just a part of that. Uh, I can't get the words out I want to say, um, but it just changed me in such a way that I began to cry about everything. Wow. I've cried for the last seven, eight, ten years, I guess, about everything. When I see something get hurt, it just kills me. But it came from that experience with these beings on how they told me how everything's a living consciousness and I don't have the right to take its life, that um, we live in a mutualistic way. Like the, the, your stomach, for example, you have bacteria in your stomach mm. that digest chlorophyll, plant material. The human can't do it, but this bacteria does. And it secretes the nutrients that you get from that plant. And it survives because you're feeding it the, the plant material, 
right? So it's a mutualistic way we live. And mm -hmm. it's like a tree gives you wood for a house. It gives you shade for the sun, a nest for a bird, oxygen to breathe, and the list goes on. So everything has a part of life on this planet, and it's not up to us to destroy it and abuse it. And it's, I could talk about this for days. Wow. Wow, that is fascinating, and it really provides insight to, if this is obviously true, to the like the way that these beings exist, the way that these beings think, the way that they portray us as humans. You know, obviously there's been this whole speculation about um, with the nuclear um, missiles being disarmed in the out, out of the atmosphere and stuff like this, and in nuclear bases. And it's almost like it, it goes hand in hand with this idea that they're trying to stop us from destroying ourselves, essentially, because life's valuable. Uh, but that's not all. So um, Chris has gone on to have some other experiences and talk about them as well. So uh, this is him explaining where UFOs really come from. I understand what all that is. What is it? <laughs> Tell me. Well, it's... Uh... It's all coming in threes. Three is the magic number. It's all about three. I've been saying this for a long time. They always come in threes. If you see one, you'll see two more. There's always three working together. They represent the Trinity. It also represents a balance between it's harmony, yeah. man and woman. You know what's wow. crazy about that is he's never even studied sacred geometry, and that's what it means according to sacred geometry. It's the harmony of creation. It's it the represents the man and the woman. The man and the woman and the creating. Eye. And that's what. But you I didn't mean. read that, did you? No. I read that. That's really what that means according to Rosicrucians and the Masons and all that shit. Wow. I have to figure that out. Well, I've been saying this for ten years now. Same thing, basically. If I get it from you got animals, it. from my experience. When you look at that light, it gives you information. It's just like a telephone. So they don't need that. All they need is to put the light in your eye. That's weird. He referred to it as downloads. Like, is he still to this day getting that information kind of like zapped into his mind? Like, is he just constantly getting like software updates? You know, like that's the best way I can describe it. Like when, when your phone gets an update, like the new iOS, for example, and you get all the new data, you get all the new perks and the updates. Interesting stuff. Anyway, um, so Chris Bledsoe has actually confirmed, apparently, a UFO sighting. Um, I'll show you the UFO sighting in a moment, but first we're going to talk about the, um, the, the, the the kind of the context that he gave to the sighting first. So this is this is what he said about this this sighting in, uh, in particular. So he said, "I'm facing the main highway, and this craft, this football, this egg, uh, with the, this light going around it, like looks like you know these like spikes almost like blades of light." And if you don't want to see a real de uh, description of, of, of this thing, there's on YouTube. You can Google YouTube I-10, Interstates 10 UFO. That's the real thing. Know it for sure. Because that's, that, that's what was there. Same kind of thing. Looked just like it, except I could see it. It wasn't in the forest. It was in front of all five of us. And this was um, his statement on this specific video. I was driving along the I-10 tonight and I saw the most amazing thing. That was the original description in 2011. And this is the clip that is being referred to. Let's take a little look. My, my computer's just not playing ball today. It's just like, no, not today. Come on. There we go. So this is the clip that was being referenced to. Obviously through the tree line. How weird is that? It's this aura around it which freaks me out the most. It's like, have you ever seen a time lapse of the sun kind of going behind the clouds and the clouds moving around the sun? It's exactly like that. That's exactly the vibe I get from this. Let's watch it one more time. It's just so weird. 
Look, it's like smoke, but it's not at the same time. Just weird, man. So, there is Chris Bledsoe. A bit about Chris Bledsoe and his experiences. Um, of course, there is more that he talks about, so I just recommend you go and uh, check that out over um you can just youtube uh chris bledsoe pod podcast or interview and it will come up where he talks about his experience with being abducted um and he doesn't really recollect much but he obviously had a terminal um illness going up to this craft then he gets abducted and then it is gone hella weird stuff let me know what you guys think down in the comments below while you're down there be sure to jump to get the hell out of that comment uh, likes button while you're down there subscribe if you're new to come on else you get notified whenever we upload to the channel until next time guys i hope you have enjoyed and i'll speak to you later peace